Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Millie's Base Side Chats, where we are live streaming to bring some calm to the chaos of your PCS. Twice a week, we interview a duty station expert to get the dish on PCSing there. We'll chat about schools, neighborhoods, climate, culture, commutes, and answer your burning questions. We will also share best practices, things we wish we'd known, and more. So be sure to tune in each week, even if it's an installation that you aren't headed to, because why? Because you never know. I'm Kelly Artis, and I'm so glad you're here. Hi, everyone. So today we are so happy to actually have made it to the live stream. (laughs) I had some technical difficulties this morning with internet, so... Anyway, we made it. So we are super excited to be chatting today about uh, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar uh, with Hope Bradley. So without any further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce her to you guys. She is joining us from beautiful San Diego and up super early. Thank you so much, Hope, for joining us. Of course. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so, so, you know, again, with time zone differences, I'm East Coast, you're West Coast, and she got up so early for me. I'm so appreciative. So thank you so much. Um, so, okay. So, I up early. Yeah, you work out <laughs> and stuff, so you get up early, right? <laughs> okay, so Hope, tell us all about yourself. Tell us what you got going on in California and how you kind of came to reside in San Diego um, and just anything we need to know about you. So I am a Navy wife of almost 11 years. We have three kids. I'm sorry for that ground noise. I'm at Starbucks on base. There's a Starbucks on base, guys. Woo-hoo! It's awesome. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> but we have three kids, ages 16, 13, and 6. Our deployment surprise baby is what we call her, but we love her. <laughs> um, we actually were had orders to the BHR in Sasebo, Japan, and about a month after we got there, they surprised us and said, hey, we're moving back to the States in a year. So we kind of got thrown into the whole San Diego thing. It wasn't really something that we picked, but we're really enjoying it so far. So tell Um, me where you were stationed before. We were in Sasebo. Oh, okay. Sasebo, Japan. Wow. Wow. So what was it like getting orders? Like, what, what were your thoughts? How did you feel? Well, so we took orders to Japan and then we got there and we had only been there about a month or two and they surprised us and we're like, oh, by the way, we're going back to the States, but we don't know where yet next year. So how long are you there? (laughs) A year. Oh man, that's such a quick turnaround. Oh my God. So it's like a vacation. (laughs) It was, it was was great to learn about Japan and like experience. I I wouldn't trade that year for anything. It, It threw me for a loop at first, but it was great. So did you even get your stuff? Like, did you ever even get like all of your household goods or did they just say, you know what, we're oh, going yeah. on to it. They showed up eventually. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> showed up and then you had to pack them right back up. So, oh, that's so amazing. What an adventure, right? <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So tell me, um, tell me about your experience in San Diego. Like, how did you choose? Where do you live? How did you choose where you live now? Um, what were some of your like decision factors in, in that process? So the thing about San Diego is the rental market is really tough. Um, so when we were in Japan, we looked online because we were interested in living possibly out in town. However, because the rental market is so competitive here, there was a lot of people that wouldn't really even deal with us because we weren't here yet. And mm. then they will only post uh, houses that are available for rent like 30 days out Mm. and pretty much as soon as they post it if it's a good price at a good price point in a good area it's gone so the rental market is very hard here um that's how we ended up in housing and some of the housing wait lists can be really long as well so you just have to be prepared for that if you are headed this direction i would get your move on um move.mil set up as soon as possible so that you can get on the housing wait list um, so that hopefully everything is expedited for you guys. Yeah. So I want to drop a couple of little nuggets for anybody that's listening, um, especially in markets like this. Um, Hope's telling us that the the turnover is really quick, and they're kind of it's there's a ton of demand, so the the landlords and whatnot can be as picky as they want to be, right? So um, signing a house sight unseen is that something that people commonly do? Have you heard of that? Um, they do, and 
you know, it's good to have a friend out here. I would stick to like our military by owner sites, mm-hmm. um, any of the military owned <clears throat> houses that mm-hmm. they're trying to, you know, their military owners trying to rent to another military family. It's probably going to be your best bet with the sight unseen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pretty common out here just because the rental market is so competitive. Yeah. So I'm going to drop links to all of our scouts that are in San Diego, you guys. So we have military spouses that you can enlist and hire to go and do some of these tasks for you. So if you don't necessarily trust the listing photos, which I think everyone, if, especially if you can't take the trip out and get there and actually see the house, um, you can hire a scout to do a walkthrough for you on FaceTime, take photos, you know, open closet doors that maybe weren't is <laughs> shown in the listing um, just to give you a little bit of peace of mind. And yes, totally stick with, you know, stuff like Ahern and military by owner um, just because, you know, <laughs> there's a little bit of security. A in that. Easier. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so the other issue is too the um, pets. You have to be very careful with mm-hmm. pets. Um, finding pet friendly rentals is an issue. And then there are really large pet deposits. So if you plan on bringing pets, you need to go ahead and save ahead of time for those deposits. Yeah, great. And tip. those requirements. Yeah, it's a great tip. And again, it just goes back to that the demand is there, so they can they can they can get yeah. away with it. Okay, so Hope, tell us a little bit about the area, San Diego in general. Like, let's help get folks oriented around um, what they might be hearing in Facebook groups when they ask, "Hey, we're headed to San Diego," and people say things like, "Oh, look at North County Inland," or you know, things like that. So let's go ahead and kind of give everyone a crash course on on San Diego. Okay, so some of the areas, um, a lot of people refer to like East Lake, which is in southern um, mm-hmm. San Diego. East Lake Chula Vista area is a really um, favorable or nice one because a lot of people that work at 32nd Street, um, it's an easy commute, and a lot of the families like the areas there. Um, then there's also the downtown area, Gas Lamp, which is where all of the action happens. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. Um, they have Comic Con down there. They have all of the festivals, all of the clubs. Um, a lot of the younger spouses really like Gaslamp area. I like Gaslamp area too every now and then, but I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> it's fun and to then, hang out occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, every now and then, like once every six months. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, and then there's the beaches area, which is really nice. Um, my favorite is North Island. So, The Coronado Strand is all of its own, basically, area. The bridge to get over there can be really bad with traffic. So that's kind of a drawback if you work on 32nd Street or at one of the other bases that are inland and not at the bases that are on the Strand. It can be a hard commute. But a lot of people really like um, Coronado Strand as well. And then there is North the north area, which is kind of where Miramar is, and then some of the other areas you'll hear, like Santee and Poway areas, are considered in North um, San Diego. So, to, so do people now? And so, one of my favorite places is La Jolla, but I don't think that's really accessible for military families to live out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, La Jolla is a little out of our reach. It's, it's nice little- <laughs> to go visit. <laughs> Beautiful, though. Okay, and so you live on the installation. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so talk to me about that. Are you enjoying that, or? Um, we are. It's what you make of it. Right. You know, you right. have to take the good with the bad at every at every duty station, and you can find things to complain about and not like, or you can find the positive and find the silver lining. So, so true. um, it's been a a difficult um adjustment for our family just because we were coming from Japan, and mm-hmm. that reverse culture shock has been real. Wow. <laughs> coming yeah. to California. But we are just finding the silver lining and making it happen. Yeah. So, do you guys do you guys have beaches on your installation too? Like, do you have private beaches out there? We don't. No. So okay. The beach, the closest beach to Miramar, is probably twenty or thirty minutes away, and okay. it's actually um, the northern area, the Escondido beaches, which I really mm-hmm. like. Actually, Solano Beach is my inside tip. That's my That's uh, gorgeous. It is Solano Beach is really nice, and it's not as crowded because some of the some of the beaches can get really crowded, um, especially in the summertime when a lot of tourists are here. Um, but Solano Beach and some of the northern beaches, um, closer to Pendleton, Del Mar, and stuff like that, they are That's really the don't get. So I was yeah, trying to think of the name of it. So I have family that lives out there, and I would always, whenever we go, we go get um, breakfast burritos from a place called Rudy's. 
And then no. we go to, I think it's Del Mar. With the, they've got like a grass, like a grassy area, like a kid's park yeah. and benches. And then the beach. Oh, it's just stinking gorgeous. I love it. And that's just a lifestyle. It's like, yeah, that's what you do. You get up early, apparently. And you... <laughs> You have to get up early so you can find parking and so you can yeah. find a spot. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> oh, man. So is there anything that you wish you had known before you got um, to California, to Southern California? So we were lucky because we were in Japan, so we were in a position to really save a lot of money. Um, San Diego is very expensive. The mm -hmm. cost of living out here, I would say, is equivalent to Hawaii, but we don't get the cola. Mm. So... Um, I would just really advise anybody that is coming, start saving now because you're not going to want to just sit in the house. You want to go do stuff. You want to go experience things, but it is very expensive out here. However, I will say there is a tremendous amount of support for military families. Um, Blue Star Families out here is huge. There is um, STEP, which is Support the Enlisted Program, and it is huge out here. The USO is always doing stuff for our families, so it really has helped us to have um that extra support in the community where they really do a lot of support things for our military families hold festivals give out padres tickets um mm -hmm. sometimes they even give tickets to the zoo for mm -hmm. our kids um, my kids have gotten to go do like i fly and stuff like that through the uso they have teen talks where they take the teens for free to go do this really cool stuff in san diego so the support community for our military out here is really awesome yeah, that's great. I love areas like that where it's really densely popular because like, you guys have several installations out there. So it's like you got a little bit of every flavor. You got all the branches represented, but then you have such a concentration of folks that, you know, live and breathe the military in addition to it being a big metropolitan sort of city and area. Um, I just I love that. It's D.C., Norfolk, I'd say Hampton Roads is probably pretty similar. Hawaii, same kind of thing where you have these like clusters of installations. Um, and communities that have kind of like grown up around them. It's so cool. Um, yeah. So what, um, so you, you gave your beach, your hidden gem beach. Do you have any other hidden gems that you'd share with folks headed to, uh, to Miramar? Um, I just really Solano beach. I really love Solano and utilize your base stuff. Yeah. So yeah. here at the outdoor center here, we can rent paddle boards, mm. um, snow equipment, there's big bears like two hours away and during yeah. the during the winter you can go up there and ski well the outdoor center on base has all of the equipment that you could ever need the helmets the skis the the snow suits the jackets yeah. all of it and you can go over there and rent it for pennies on a dollar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's awesome. for sure that's a great tip i know like florida i know that we, we just had a chat on florida and they were talking about you know like renting like pontoon boats and you know kayaks and all kinds of crazy stuff so so ncrd does that as well here oh, cool. and they actually have a bay area where you just put the boat right in the water and take off it's great oh, that's awesome is it mission bay is that one of the it is it's oh, near mission bay love mm -hmm. that. so we made the mistake though there's apparently there's a college side and then like a family side <laughs> So we made that mistake once. We're like, uh, we have children. We do not belong here. Right? <laughs> it's too late. We got to go to bed. Um, That's how I feel about the gas lamp sometimes. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, my pumpkin, like my, my carriage just turned into a pumpkin. I got to go. Y'all have fun. <laughs> Be safe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so though that's awesome i have always been so envious of folks that get orders to san diego it just is such a beautiful place i mean and when you think of california that's what i think of as san diego um we got we were in monterey for a little while it's kind of central coast up near san francisco and it was foggy and kind of cold and we were like wait where we were supposed to be in california so, <laughs> so this is like your idyllic like surfer city like this is this is what most people think of california to be so how much do you have much longer there or what's on the horizon for you oh we are stuck in hurry up and wait mode Yay. unfortunately right now <laughs> so we'll see we'll okay. see what the navy does with us we, yeah yeah we never know we just hold on tight and hope for the best so cool all right so awesome well i want to chat just briefly or maybe as long as we want actually um, about uh, Dependa Strong. So um, in this transitional period, it's just been really rough for my family. We've had, we've gone through some stuff that, you know, like if you read about it on Military Spouse, it's happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, 
part of that was just really my heart for other people. Um, I feel like the community has changed a little bit in the last 10 years. Um, it doesn't as closely reflect how it was when I first came in where um, there was really a group of military spouses that just loved on each other and we were a community. We took care of each other because we all were in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So um, I've seen a little bit of a division in the community, especially online when people just can be mean and hateful and um, I just feel like it's uncalled for. Like we are all in the same boat, regardless of rank, regardless of the the branch that your spouse is in. Like we all deal with pretty much the same stuff where we miss somebody that we love and we're worried about somebody that we love and we have to worry about our kids and we have to do all of these things and wear all of these different hats and I feel like we should just support each other. So we're not dependas, we're dependa strong. And when we when we lean on each other and when we create that community and we have that positivity in our community where we're taking care of ourselves, um, both mentally and physically, which means self-care, whatever that looks like for you. For me, it's the gym. It's not the gym for everybody, but I encourage everybody to always, you can't pour from an empty cup. So you have to take care of yourself. Um, and then also taking care of each other. So that's just kind of the mission behind it is to create community within our um, military spouse community. And then also um, advocacy, like we have to get involved when stuff directly affects our community. It's not enough to get on Facebook and complain about it. Mm. Get involved, write a letter to Congress, show up at the town hall meetings, um, show up at the school district, the school board meetings, when there's issues with your kids' schools, like show up, we have mm -hmm. to show up. And um, as a community, we know what we deal with and we're the only ones that are gonna be that voice for one another. So if it affects you, it should affect me. Yeah. And we have to just band together and try to create a positive change. So that's really what Depend of Strong is about, is just creating community, raising awareness that, you know, as dependents, we suffer from a lot of um, mental illness, like stressors. There's yeah. a lot of stressors in our life that can affect our mental health um, and our kids. Our kids are struggling with this on astronomical terms. Um, and so I just really want to raise awareness about that and then combat that with community and yeah. with advocacy. Yeah, that's fantastic. So are you are you hosting local sort of meetup oriented? Like, how can people get involved with with? This? Yeah, we are. So here in San Diego, we are doing like pretty much a weekly either like boot camp or a hike or get together and have coffee, just get out of the house and meet people. Um, let's create that community. Let's create those connections instead of just being on the internet all the time. Let's actually <laughs> like get out from behind get the out screen. People, yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it is what you make of it and you have to put yourself outside of your comfort zone sometimes and just dive in head first and and meet people and I feel like you're better for it sometimes so I'm, glad um, you, I'm glad you brought that up too though I wonder I often wonder so we've been in about my husband's been in for maybe 15 years so I've been married to him for what 13 now so you know been around for a minute um yeah it was a little different. You're right. I'm glad you bring up that yeah. distinction. Like, so, you know, those of us who went through some of like the crazy deployments and, you know, Iraq and troop surge and all of that, it was, it was more of like a jump in and, and baptism by fire. Like you had really? to reach out to your groups, like, cause they were the ones telling you when the guys were coming home or, you know, whoever. So it was like, there was a little more of a reliance on that system. Um, whereas, now that I've been in for a minute, I don't rely on the system as much and things have calmed down, you know, relatively. Right. Um, and so, I don't know, I feel like it's not as, as crucial to get plugged in. Um, and then you throw in PCSs into that. So we've had the privilege of staying kind of stable relatively um, for a while. So I haven't had the need to rely on some of the, the formal structures, the FRGs, the whatnots. Um, so you almost have to create well, that elsewhere. So, I, you know, and some and people kind of like, buck that too. I did yeah. for a long time. Yeah. I feel like some of that has put a bad taste in people's mouths too. Sure. And so Depend of Strong is not about the politics. Mm -hmm. It's not about any of that. It is just about we're spouses. Um, most of us are women. Uh, we do have some male spouses, cool. of course, mm -hmm. in our group as well. And I love them to death. But it's it's about empowering one another. Like. Yeah. Just being positive and being that person that can say, hey, I've been there. Like, yep. we all have those days. 
just being transparent with each other and being real, um, not trying to make our mess look pretty. That's what I say. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, we should stop like dressing our mess up in a pretty little bow. So you're saying I need to show my laundry like, that's piled up on my guest bed over here and not my pretty like, <laughs> it ain't happening. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, just being real with each other, yeah. you know, on a, on a personal level where we can say, Hey, I've been there too. Like yeah. we all have those days. We all have even those seasons in life where just stuff doesn't seem like it's going right and stuff yeah. is just really hard. Yeah. And sometimes you need somebody that's willing to reach back and help pull you out of that place. And so that's what I want to pin a strong to be. Fantastic. Well, I mean, just best of luck with everything that you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Um, if you guys are headed to San Diego, be sure to connect with Hope. We will drop all of her social links and everything. So tell everyone just really quickly, like, where can they find you online? So um, Depend of Strong is online. There's a group and then there's the official page for the nonprofit because it is going to be um, something where we start fundraising and doing some advocacy efforts. Awesome. But the group is really about um, the connections, making a connection with another spouse, whether it be in your area or across the country. However, um, just so we can support and love on each other. So, so great. either one. <laughs> yeah, so great. Okay, we'll drop all of that in the post copy of wherever this lands. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you're headed to California, specifically to uh, MCAS Miramar or elsewhere, there's several right there. Um, I'm sure I hope would be ha more than happy to answer questions in the thread. We'll tag Absolutely. her, make sure she's following. Um, you guys, be sure to check out our base guides for the area so you can kind of get a handle on, you know, the, the map, the commutes, things like that, maybe what some potential areas look like, um, so to speak. We had military spouses take photos of all of the areas that we talk about, so you'll get it through literally through our lens um, of relevant and pertinent information for your big move. Um, and then, you know, send me photos of your sunshiny days and your, <laughs> and your beach trips and your surfboards, and I'll live vicariously through all of you who have the privilege <laughs> of living there. <laughs> Um, okay. Thanks so much, Hope. We really appreciate your time, your patience with all of our snafus and um, yeah, just being willing to share your, your insights. So thank you. Of course. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So we are going to, I'm going to edit this up and package it and post it on uh, the group and put it in our unit section. So be sure to check the units for this chat and others. We will be live again tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Colorado Springs. So be sure to tune in and join us there. Until next time, everyone, have a great day. Thanks.